How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? If you were in our most recent live stream, you could have been privy to the discussion where we came up with that as a current nickname. Uh, there were some other very funny, very interesting ones, but unfortunately, YouTube algorithm, I don't think would enjoy those very much. Anyways, it is the end of spring training here for our Mariners. Uh, sitting rank 13th in the MLB, and if we take a look at the standings from spring training, I think we're sitting at 8th out of 15 in the Cactus League. So, a little bit below average. We could, you know, half a game back from the Brewers of being above average, but, uh, I mean, how, first off, how did they get to play so many more games than us? That seems rude. Uh, unless there's, like, a playoff or something, because all of these teams have more. But, uh, you know, two games back of 500 isn't terrible. It's not great. 266 batting average with a 447 slugging, a 344 on base percentage, okay fielding, and a 394 ERA. I, I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I feel like our batting average, a tiny bit higher would be really nice. And if our ERA could drop just a little bit, we would be in a much better position. Now, I've played a lot of Diamond Dynasty in this game. Again, you can watch that on Twitch at twitch.tv slash goodmaster. But when I'm not doing that, sometimes I'll pop into the franchise just to take a look at what I can do in future episodes. And one thing that I noticed is in free agency, there is a guy that uh, is like an absolute must pick up. I don't know why we wouldn't get him. I don't know how I didn't see him previously. I think he's in the right field. Or uh, no, he's in the left field, and it is Jermaine Nugent. You probably see it right there, standing out mostly because of his age, 19 years old. And this guy looks like he came straight out of the 80s with the hair and the big mustache. But Jermaine, again, 19 years old out of California. He's only 65 overall, but he's a B potential. Super young, a little bit short. Uh, he's got good contact, low power, and his fielding needs some work. So I think if we picked him up, we would work on mostly his fielding we want him to be a good defensive player i think unfortunately for jermaine he's a little bit too small to become a good power hitter so maybe the power stats could be raised up a little bit and the contact you know could become otherworldly who knows but uh we're definitely not expecting him to be just absolutely tanking home runs all the time so we will go ahead and offer jermaine a spot we're a little bit low actually as you can see in the uh, left field, it's just Jesse Winkler and Jared Kalanick in the MLB compared to like all of our center fielders and our three uh, right fielders. So uh, I think it's worth it. I absolutely think it's worth it. We will try and pick him up. And again, being a young guy, being a minor guy, uh, free agent, he's going to be cheap. We unfortunately can't offer him more than a year contract, which is fine. So nothing special. And I'm going to lowball him at first 60000 Seems like most guys are getting 70,000, uh, but we're going to have him reject us for that and we'll pick him up with the 70,000 option. So now on our left fielders, he is technically the fourth best on the roster, but he's also the youngest by three years to Jared Kelnick. So that is really good news for us. We've got him starting in AAA, which I am completely fine with. I think he could do well enough there. If he struggles, we move him down to AAA and let him bat around there for a little bit. But it puts us in a decent spot. Um, he's a better batter than Tanner Kerwer. Uh, a little bit slower, a little bit worse fielder. Uh, and a little bit less power, but that's like three power. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think this guy could absolutely be a stud in the future. Now, one th more thing I want to do is try to make a couple of trades. If we look around on our depth chart on the right side of the screen... Uh, we can see six left fielders, six center fielders, seven right fielders, uh, six in a lot of spots, 23 relievers, but only four closers, and then eight catchers. So part of me says if we could get rid of one of our right fielders uh, and a couple of our relievers and maybe a catcher and look for closers and maybe a shortstop, that would be fantastic. So we're going to try and do a little bit of trading here. Obviously, we need to give up some decent pieces if we want to get back anything that's not prospects. Part of the problem with being our GM is, I don't know if we've actually gone over it, but our goals for the season, uh, well, our yearly goal is to reach the postseason, and our contract goal, which is only three years, is to win a division series. So the GM has pretty high hopes for us, which kind of scares me. I know for a fact if we don't achieve those, they will not hesitate to fire us. And that's the last thing we want in this series. So while we have picked up some really good prospects, I think it would be wise of us 
to be trying to get a couple of MLB ready players as well. So we'll look at some relievers. I don't mind dealing uh, maybe a bit of a prospect uh, reliever, maybe some guys who aren't very good as well. You know, I'm always trying to get rid of awful players off the roster. Uh, but let's start with catchers. So we have an interesting situation. Tom Murphy, best catcher. I don't think it's wise to get rid of him this year just because he's, I mean, he's six overall better than Brian O'Keefe. Uh, but speaking of Brian O'Keefe, I wouldn't mind getting rid of him. We're only paying him 50000 He's a 74 overall, so he has some value, but he is 28 years old. So he's going to go on to this trade board. Um, our other guys, um, I don't really care about Jake. Jake is kind of uh, in a state of limbo in my mind, but Harry Ford seems like he's going to be good. 19 years old, B potential. And Cal Rally, Rayley? I think it's got to be Rayley, right? I'm not entirely sure. Him and uh, Luis Torrens. Both 25, both be potential, both in a spot where they could do something. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Torrens's contract at 1.2 million, uh, and he enters arbitration here, so who knows, that might go down, but I kind of doubt it. Um, his batting is pretty solid. What does he do last season for us? 243, uh, 730 OPS. How's his war? Positive war. So he's got that going for him, which is, I think, a pretty important stat. So for now, I think Brian O'Keefe is the guy that we look to get rid of in the uh, catching depth. And then it's just trying to find a good reliever or two that we can throw in there. Um, you know, we don't want to give somebody who's really good. We don't want to give somebody who's t absolutely terrible because we got to sweeten the pot a little bit. And our bullpen is has some depth. So right off the bat, we're going to take a look. B potential Sal Romano. He's 28 overall. He's in the minor leagues. He's played... Uh, in the MLB last time he played last year he had a 6.12 ERA which is pretty rough and a negative war um, his career total supposedly I don't know if that war doesn't transfer but it says it's even 1.48 whip and a 5.23 ERA so he could do something for a team and I don't know if we can go much higher than that we have some guys that I wouldn't mind getting rid of in the future, but I just don't know if we're ready to trade them at this point in the season. Drew Steckenrider, I wouldn't mind trading. He's the second best reliever that we have. He's 31, uh, 78 overall. He's not really going to improve a whole lot. And uh, 2.0 ERA last year's 1.02 whip is really good. And the positive war, somebody would definitely pay for that. But we're going to deal somebody who's more of a prospect. Part of me says Johan Ramirez because he's got that $700,000 salary, but that's a little bit too low. Let's look. Uh, well, I guess we'll go right below Sal Romano. Andrew Albers. Who knows if I'm saying that right? Played for Toronto. Must have came in the same deal as a lot of guys. 36 years old, 63 overall. And last year, a 7.58 ERA, 1.74 whip. And the negative one more. So we're going to throw him in there. We're just looking for somebody who's okay. Again, trying not to cheese the CPU a little bit too much. Well, I found a couple of options that I really like. A bunch of teams were offering us shortstops, and that's what we need. The Phillies offering us Bryson Stott. I don't think we're going to take this 24-year-old. He's a rising prospect, B overall, 71 overall, and currently is the highest overall uh, shortstop on this Phillies team. I just don't think that that's realistic. I like the idea. He's not a great batter, but he's a good fielder. Instead, we'll take one that doesn't hurt us too much, and it might hate, hurt the Yankees a little bit, but it's the Yankees, so I don't think most people will mind, and that is Oswaldo Cabrera. He's 23 years old and a C potential, so a little bit older, a little bit lower potential, and he's got just a slightly higher overall at the moment, two overall. Uh, he again bats actually a little bit better 50 contact against both sides mid 50s power against both sides He's pretty quick. He's got good fielding Seems like it could be a, a really really good spot His contract is renewable for the next couple of years and he's incredibly cheap So that's something they're into that's something I'm into we dump a little bit of uh, salary They pick up two relievers and a decent catcher uh, uh, this to me is a win-win, so we will go ahead and offer this trade to the Yankees. They'll accept it, and there we go. Just continuing to make moves one at a time as this uh, series continues to go further in. Gives us a little bit more depth at the shortstop, and again, just kind of trying to get rid of... I mean, we have so many relievers on the roster, so trying to get rid of some guys that I don't think are going to go anywhere. It actually makes Oswaldo our second best shortstop behind J.P. Crawford, 
who in real life is, I'm pretty sure, having a pretty good start to this season. And I, I kind of expect JP to continue to go do good things for us. So I do not mind as well, though, being in AAA. I uh, might have something to say about Donovan Walton being in the on the MLB roster uh, behind a, a guy like Noel V. Marte, but that's something that we can work with in the future. So I think the start of a lot of these episodes, especially here at the beginning of the franchise and early in the season, are going to have a lot of trades and free agency pickups, contract extensions, that sort of stuff. But now it's time. Let's go to opening day. This is going to be interesting. Advancing, we play the Tigers game one, and this is a pretty big game, so we'll jump in and player lock as somebody for this one. So for the 31st of March, let's go in and see what we can do. Trying to have some success on opening day. It is against the Tigers, but they've made some moves recently. Let's just hop in with uh, the top of the order. Adam Frazier, 81 overall second baseman, and we'll see what we can do with him. Oh, man. It's uh, been an interesting spring training. Again, very, very curious to see what we can do. The The main goal is 500 on the season. If we can beat that, we're fine. And then if we could sneak our way into the postseason year one, that would be incredible. I think getting slightly better pitchers might be the key, though. Uh, if we could pick up a good starter to go alongside Robbie, who is getting his first start as a Mariner today, that could change things quite a bit. Let's go ahead, hop in here, and we're going to be on defense right away. So well, let's just see if we can hold these guys. 0-2 count, no outs, and well, this should be an easy out. Just a little grounder to us. Make sure we make the safe throw, and there's out number one of the season for your Seattle Mariners. My goodness. Well, we uh, have player locked as the most important defensive position in all of baseball apparently today <laughs> as all that we're going to be doing is fielding grounders and throwing them to Ty France and I guess just uh, getting every single put out that we can today all right Adam last year a 305 batting average 779 OPS what can we do I will say my batting comes in waves so one day I might be batting everything out of the park and the next day I might miss every single pitch so do not expect a whole lot out of me taking the first pitch waiting second pitch just fouled off the slider a little bit late there didn't want to swing but it was too juicy of a strike in a good spot O2 2 count now just have to lay off oh lucky that one was a cutter didn't feel confident as he goes uh four seam slider cutter pitch number four it's gonna be ball number two Evens up the count at two and two. What can we do against Eduardo Rodriguez here? He's going to load the count. I feel like this is pretty common for us. We get into high strike or bad uh, pitchers counts early. And then they load up the bases in a diving stop. Is that Jaimar Candelario? Is he playing their second base? No, oh, it's Jonathan Scope. Where does Candelario play? <laughs> it shows my knowledge of the Tigers players. A huge defensive play. Would have been a base hit if he doesn't get to that one. Unfortunate for us. And now to the bottom of the third we go. One out, a runner on first. It's uh, Jared Kelnick. So good to see that he's having a good start to opening day. Need him having a great season. I still would put all my chips on him this year trying to pitch out i don't know why they think he's gonna steal if he tries to steal we're swinging first pitch uh grounder to scope to let him turn two well speak of the man here he is he's got two outs and a runner on second and if we are up to the uh to play some defense you know it's coming our way top of the fourth what can we do here it's going to be another grounder. It is going to be another grounder. We're going to get to it. He took away our base hit. We're going to take away his, and that'll bring us to the middle of the fourth. So getting through this game relatively quick. Ooh, fun. The fan cam. This is a fun addition. Uh, what are these? Oh, my gosh. This is terrifying. All right. 0 for 2 with two ground outs on the day. Rodriguez still in. Pitching. Uh, bottom of the sixth. 84 pitches thrown. He's still green on the energy. Maybe we lay off the first pitch. Oh, that was a... I, I don't know. I like a, anything in the upper half. 
with a fastball. It's hard not to swing on. Second pitch. We got to get to it. It's a cutter. We loop it into the right field for a base hit. And there we are. 333 now batting for Frazier. As we'll see if we can round the bases and get home. Score the first run of this game. No outs is really big news as J.P. Crawford is going to come up to bat in the two spot. Hoping for the best. Two strike count. We're taking a little bit of a lead here just in case it's that grounder. Maybe to help us beat the double play. But we don't do so. Javi Baez steps on the bag. Throws it to the first. And that's two gone. What are we at now? Top of the seventh. No outs. And it's Javi Baez who is 0 for 2. Strikeout, ground out. I am going to play all the defense in this game just because it's opening day. It's a big day for us. And we need to do anything we can. Grounder, third baseman drops it. Late getting it to us. It's an error. Terrible th throw for him. So uh, that's going to put two on. A little bit disappointing, I would say. And I'm assuming that's Eugenio Suarez. But I don't know. Maybe that's Abraham Toro. I can tell just based off of who we're looking at, who made the error there. But it's not one that you like to see on opening day. That's for sure. Just did a little check. It is. In fact, Eugenio Suarez. So you pick him up in the offseason, and that's his first play. A little bit disappointing. This one's going to come to us, and we're not going to be able to get to, but we're able to make him worry. We have them now in a spot where a double play could end the inning, and we got out of it. No problem. Come in back up to bat. At bottom of the seventh, Gregory Soto into pitch. Little lefty on lefty action. Shouldn't be too easy. He throws the first one a sinker. 97 miles an hour into the dirt as there are 41,514 Mariners fans in attendance. That's a big number for today. <laughs> Had to swing on the slider. We just popped that straight up to end the eighth. A little bit of a bummer. I'm just thinking about it now. Top of the ninth. Two outs. Was that attendance number a palindrome? I didn't think about it long enough. Anyways... A little grounder to us. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's the first time I have ever missed one of those throws in this game. We just got bailed out. We are not batting. It's going to be J.P. Crawford, Ty France, and Mitch Hanniger up to bat to try and walk it off here on opening day. Now opening night, and it looks like we got the job done. Wish that we could have seen it, but it's a win. The question is, did it have to go to extra innings? And the answer is, uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't say. Drew Steigenreiter gets the win, so he had to come in relieving. And no, we were able to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth. And it's J.P. Crawford, first bat, bat there uh, in the inning. One for three. He hits a home run, gets his RBI, gets his run. And he gets us the win. you love to see it. Robbie Ray pitched eight innings, gave up one hit five strikeouts and two walks that is really good that was the one hit i'm wondering if that's what they're saying was the error or not but i'm not entirely certain all i know is at least i got one hit on our four at bats could have been a little bit better but it was enough for us to get the win so a beautiful way for us to start the season one and oh on the one and oh win and uh, now this is an interesting thing. Sponsorships are a part of this game. And the more you play Diamond Dynasty, realistically, the more you get. Now, currently we have no sponsorships equipped. Um, and, and it's going to be interesting how we decide to do these. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense for a team not to have all their sponsorships. But there are silver sponsorships, gold sponsorships, and diamond sponsorships. And in my opinion, we should only be allowed to use silver sponsorships until we make the postseason. Once we make the postseason, we could use gold ones the next season. Uh, and then we're going to have to make it to at least a championship series before we can use a diamond sponsorship. So this unfortunate one, $2,000 per hit is not going to be allowed. It's just going to be curious. Do we think that we're going to get a lot of hits, but not a lot of home runs? Uh, we have a lot of those. 20,000 per win is something that we'd have to put up. Uh, we are definitely not going to be getting a lot of stolen bases. The 15,000 per game is too much just not to take because it's a guaranteed amount of money. And then we're going to go. Let's go with uh, the Jordan brand silver sponsorship. That'll give us $1,500 per hit. And all of that is just going to help us with building up a little bit bigger war chest. So just maybe spend on another really good starting pitcher. Beyond that, let's do some scouting. This is another really important part. And I think I've said it in probably a CFB revamp video. But scouting 
is in recruiting and drafting is probably my favorite part of all dynasty or franchise modes in existence so we're going to take this pretty seriously and we're going to hope that we can do really well and right off the bat we have 12 almost 13 million dollars in staff salary and in my eyes if we spend that on scouting that's really good daniel ramirez is the only scout that's safe he's Pretty good finding position players and pitchers. He's not the most efficient. He's not the best at discovering them. But, I mean, the guys that he does find, it sounds like, are pretty impressive. So what we're going to do is just spend some money looking for a really good scout. If you understand the scouting in MLB The Show really well and you see something that I'm doing wrong or that I could be doing better, let me know. But, uh, I mean, there's no way we don't pick up Quinn Hugh, the uh, East Region Scout. He's asking for over $3 million a year. But how is that not worth it for what we get? And we're just going to replace um, probably the worst Scout, which I know it, it kind of seems like Franklin Clem, but since he's only a million, we're going to go and get rid of Maury Sellers and just give ourselves a nice boost right there off the bat. That puts our staff salary now up to almost 15 million. So it hurts our payroll a little bit, uh, but I think it's worth it for scouting. Uh, I've seen some people, some other creators find some really, really impressive talents. Uh, and that's obviously what we're looking for as well. If we could find somebody in a late round who's just like a generational find, I would love to find that. And I kind of think a high efficiency international scout makes a lot of sense or we could go for uh the central one but freddie lawrence is going to replace aaron garcia oh it just completely got rid of the wrong scout it got rid of quinn hugh so that's a mistake how about if we now get rid of aaron garcia uh, fire freddie lawrence hire, hire quinn hugh i hope that we didn't just lose why is it doing the wrong thing so we are going to hire freddie lawrence I hope I haven't lost a bunch of money because uh, I have done this wrong a couple of times. But we're going to get rid of Aaron Garcia. And that... Why is... It's not... It's just flipping the wrong guys. <laughs> Can I please just get... Maybe if we get rid of Clem. Fire Frank Clem. There we go. So Aaron Garcia had some weird contract clause where we just weren't able to get rid of him. But now we have two really good scouts uh on to the roster our staff's hourly up to 16 million so we're spending a little bit there but uh hopefully it pays off for us as far as scouting goes just looking at uh blue chip guys early on we have a lot of 80 overall potential players but the suspected current overalls aren't that good for them so like johnny park closing pitcher could be good but he's not great right now. So his MLB ETA is next year, but I don't know if I would trust that with a 65 overall. We could find somebody a lot better than that. So we have a lot of these newly discovered players, which is the kind of bulls I look in one, not the blue chip players. Uh, we'll probably scout a few of these guys. I like to scout both the guys with the highest potential and the current highest overall, just to see if their potential is incorrect. I like to start on the potential. So Vincent Bouchang, the international player. Where is he from? Canada. Um, he's 19. He is international. So we are going to assign Freddie Lawrence to scout him. Uh, and then we're going to send some other guys to just go and discover players for now. So I'll be jumping in on that pretty much every day just to make sure that everything scouting works as well as it could. Uh, beyond that, though, let's just try and get things going. We got 62 days to the draft. We won't be getting that done in this episode, but we will get through the first couple of weeks, the first couple of series. Uh, again, we're going to sim through games unless they're important. And if a critical moment pops up, we will play that critical moment. So game two against Detroit. Look at that. Immediately a critical moment. Kelnick has two home runs today already, and we want to make it three. I mean, I guess we'll lock in uh, on player lock, but man, the odds of me hitting a third home run with Jared Kelnick is pretty low. We come in with a 3-1 lead. Gosh, just got to hope for the best here. Didn't Gregory Soto also pitch yesterday? He just got put in to relieve in the bottom of the eighth. I like that. I think I pulled the PCA way right. Decent timing on the slider. Even just a base knock, I would be fine with. But how about Jared Kelnick as we hit that one into the shift and we're not quite going to beat it out. Man, Kelnick though. Two home runs. That's impressive. 
And after all that, well, we get the win. Who knows exactly what the score is? It's always a little bit uh, sus, but starting the season 2-0 and Kellenic 2 for 4 with two home runs. All three of our runs batted in. Logan Gilbert gets his first win. Seven, seven innings pitched, five hits given up, four strikeouts, a walk, and an error. That makes it two down and 160 to go. Game three against Detroit is a 1-3 loss. Game four against Detroit, we have another critical situation, a one-run lead to protect. And we've got Paul Seawald up pitching to Javi Baez. Uh, we just got to get three outs here. Let's get it done. What can we do to get this one? A one-run lead. We are favored to win by the win expectancy by a mile. Let's just throw some smart pitches here. Getting Javi to swing real early there. How about a little high inside fastball? Can we get that pinpoint pitching a little bit off? This is my first two pitches thrown of the day. Uh, we'll throw a little two-seamer his way. Why not? Ooh, pops it up. Mitch Hanniger, no chance he's going to get to it. That one's going to land foul. Make the count one and two. We went to the slider early at this at bat. We're going to go back to it, but just trying to get it a little bit further outside the zone. And it's a swing and a miss for Baez. That's one down, two to go. Well, man, the, the slider is what the catcher wants. I'm going back to that high inside fastball. I feel like as long as we don't drop it too low into the zone, we have something accurate kind of like that. It could work really well. Let's just dot the corners. Uh, Jonathan Scope here, who has caused so much problem for us. Missed the pitch just outside for ball one. Now we can go to that slightly outside slider. Get him to swing. And you better remember that, buddy, because we're coming back to it if we need to. One, two's the count. The two-seamer low and inside, and it's another swing and a miss. Two strikeouts in a row for Paul Sewald as he's just eight pitches in. And one to go here in the top of the ninth to get this third win of the season. Let's just go back to that pitch. Yeah, I agree with the catcher. Oh, just missed the two-seamer inside. Spencer Torkelson is one for three so far today with a double, I think, in his one hit. Got him swinging there. Evens up the count, one and one. Throwing a lot of this two-seam at this at-bat. This could be a risky one. Perfect, and he does get on it, but it's Mitch Hanniger back there for the easy fly out. And the third win of the Mariners regular season as we continue to stay above 500. That is going to be the goal all season long. Stay above 500. Anything else is a bonus. You love to see it. It was Chris Flexen getting the win on that. Six innings pitched and four strikeouts with a 3.0 ERA so far this season. And we have just a quick little uh, end to the home stance against the Angels. Two games. First game is a 4-1 win. Moves us to 4-1. Second is a chance maybe to win. We're down a run in the bottom of the ninth with one out. Jesse Winkler up to bat against Rizel Iglesias. And coming into this one, Winkler, one for four with a home run in the game. Six for 16, batting 375 early on in this season. This is a good matchup for us. Can we make something of it? Looking for the home run pitch, and that could have been it right away. Is it going to have the carry? Ch uh, no, Mike Trout on the warning track. It's going to haul it in. Just thought that we had it. I just got a little bit too aggressive swinging at the first pitch. Didn't get full contact. Now it's going to be Mitch Hanniger up. Two outs. Just got to get on base here. Hoping for the best. Low inside pitcher. Kind of at the waist. Hanniger two for three in this game. Has the 1-0 count in his favor. Trying to hold on. Tough not to swing at that, but I think it's going to be an easy out for Mike Trout. Just popped it up a little bit too much. Good timing on it. Didn't quite fully get the barrel of the bat. And there's a loss to the Angels. Showing Otani there. I wonder if he started to pitch this game. Splitting that series 1-1. Not the end of the world. It is Otani getting his first one of the season. He pitched, or he has pitched 11.1 innings. Robbie Ray takes the loss there. So that puts him at 0-1. But, I mean, realistically, I don't know. He's done pretty well. 2.08 ERA so far. So now it is on to the Twins, our first road series of this season. See what we can do. Joe Ryan against Logan Gilbert. And we're going to hop in bottom of the 10th. Zero outs with a one-run lead. It's Paul Seawald up again. Oh, this is important. We might call ourselves just a little bit blessed here. Uh, we are kind of at the bottom of their order as the sun. Man, this is atrocious. But it's Gary Sanchez 
on second base, 21 speed, four steal. So we have a lot to work with there. If we can get a strikeout, maybe we would consider a walk, but I mean, I don't know. Designated hitter could make things interesting. Strike one and strike two come very, very quickly. And now we're gonna go right to the high inside four seamer, see if we can get him kind of jammed up and he is able to foul it off, stays alive for now. Well, let's go to the one that I like. How about the inside slider? I was a little bit slow on it. Kept it inside the zone, but it's a swing and a miss. And Kirloff just missed that one. First out, two more to go. Feels like we keep getting in solid spots with our pitching. Yeah, again, if uh, pitching is going to win us a lot of games, is Trevor just barely held up there. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Let's go back to this slider. Oh, catcher wants it outside. We'll listen to the catcher in this instance. And it's popped up. Kyle Lewis in center field, staying underneath it. Very short, no chance that Gary Sanchez is going to third on a, a tag up there. Now here's where it's gonna be interesting. Byron Buxton definitely can be a power hitter. I think he actually hits pretty well power-wise against righties, it's very quick. A threat for the bunt, but with two outs, probably wouldn't go for it. Slider on first pitch is just outside for ball one. We'll try to match that spot with a four seamer and he's gonna foul it off as we put it middle middle how about that two seamer that we love up high no i just chose a slider well we'll throw a slider i'm just gonna kind of use this as a throwaway pitch if he swings he's a fool but it's gonna be two one so now we could go to the two seamer meant to click it just hit the wrong button last time low inside decent timing it's a swing and a miss ball a little bit got away thankfully good catching there We'll go back to the two seam, just putting it a little bit higher, hoping that we can get the break. And we load the count. Three, two, two outs. We know that Gary's going to be running. I'm throwing a ball here. I'm not necessarily willing to risk it, and it's a strikeout on Byron Buxton. So we get out of that one, and it's a extra innings win. You love to see it. The team really feeling like they're alive. That must have been another Logan Gilbert win for us, or another outing for Logan Gilbert. Every single time he takes them out, it's good news for us. Uh, that's good. Seawald gets the save. It looked like a win maybe went to Steckenrider. He, he must have pitched in the ninth there and was technically in, in the 10th when we uh, picked him up, but Paul Seawald getting it done. Good two strikeouts and a flyout. That's exactly what we want to see out of a save as we just continue to win. I don't know where this is coming from. That win puts us to five and two. That actually gives uh, Suwald his fourth save of the season already through seven games as we'll just continue to move uh, through this series. And trying to sim through the day, the Braves have offered us a trade and I would be probably willing to take a lot of these things. They are saying Drew Waters, the center fielder, for uh, Ian McKinney, our starting pitcher. I'm actually probably inclined to say no to this. I don't think that we need a center fielder. He is 23 and a B potential, but 63 overall. Uh, decent batting, his AAA stats. He's uh, two, two, I mean, three games played. He's batting 727. This dude could be incredible, or he could just be having a really good start to the season. I just don't think that we can take this. How good is Ian McKinney? Uh, 70 overall, D. 27? Oh, man. This is right up my alley. <laughs> I know that we need starting pitchers, but at the same time, gosh, there's a lot of them on the roster here. Uh, we do have a solid amount of center fielders is the problem, and I'm just not sure if we can afford to pick up another one, so we'll decline this trade for now. The Twins are the exact opposite of a record at this point as we are in the middle of the series. It's a, <laughs> well, that's going to hurt. A 2-8 loss on the road. Uh, how about Chris Flexen? He's 1-0. Can he get the win? No, it's a 15-4 loss. We're getting obliterated here. ERA for Chris just jumped up to a 7.27. And uh, Nick Margavicious, I will never be able to say his name properly, even if I hear it a million times and say it correctly a million times. When I come back to it, I'll get it wrong. Anyways, he's got an outing here. What can he do against Drew Stroatman? Stroatman? Well, he gets us a win. So that's really good news for us. Continuing to stay above 500. We'll go through the Sox series as the final one of this uh, episode. And we're going to enter into the bottom of the ninth with no outs and a one-run lead with the man himself, Paul Seawald, pitching on the mound. Is Monty Grandall up to bat? Uh, good news is there's no runners on base. So we can just 
wheel and deal at our own pace if we walk a guy probably not the end of the world obviously we don't want the tying run on base and the winning run to the plate but we'll take what we can get us it's a quick couple of fastballs for two strikes and now we can go to our beautiful strikeout pitch but it's a slider in the dirt kind of lost control of that one catcher wants us to go back to it i'm gonna listen to him don't always do so we got him to swing but he makes contact fouls it off and how about that high outside fastball one and two trying to throw a strike here dropped a little bit low so he's able to foul that off as well you know the two seamer low and away is one that i tend to like so that's what we're gonna go for and again i lost control and that lands just foul that was about as close as you could get so still alive one and two let's go back to the inside slider we can give up a ball or we can have him just ground it to jp crawford picks it up man really really slow is grand also uh out number one two to go robert up to bat now he's one for three on the day at the five spot we're gonna go high fastball for a strike we're just gonna go right back to that but outside trying to get him swinging threw it a little bit early so it gets away from us two seam bottom left of the zone you know we like that and eh, we'll take a ball two and one isn't great but we haven't been in too many hitters counts and we're not gonna stay in it as he fouls that one away time for the slider outside you already know it's coming the question is will he swing on it can we get the strikeout man he was way out in front of that sitting on a fastball and he just missed for out number two and i am curious uh a lot of people like this pitching view i want to know in the comments down below what you guys prefer i just have always had it on the uh strike zone but i don't mind uh the the pitcher cam kind of lets you see at least what's happening with the catcher if we're gonna miss a ball is he's gonna be able to trap it how his framing is so let me know in the comments what you guys think about this as aj pollock is up to bat and oh my gosh my thumb like slipped off the controller there so it's one and one to him as we'll throw that two seamer it's been working pretty well perfect throw and we just get the corner of the strike zone and it's time to go back to our old favorite the outside slider and aj pollock's gonna loop it into right field for a base hit so still alive for the white Sox as they've got two outs and a man on first adam engel gets on base as the pinch runner but it's eloy jimenez as the designated hitter and now we have a little bit more riding on it can't get caught out too much good strike on the first pitch definitely have to be worried about the steal in this position 92 speed 45 stealing there on first and he's gonna take off this has to be oh i was me pitching i just thought we were player lock there so i didn't even try to pick him off ah oh, that's a shame i i got confused where we were and we didn't even throw a strike on the play either so that really hurts that should have been a pick off that should have been the end of the game now we have one strike and a runner in scoring position it kind of go back to that outside slider but we're gonna put it way outside I don't mind loading the count here and getting a walk. Catcher says, high outside four-seamer. We're going to listen to him in this situation. And it's fouled off by Jimenez. He is 0 for 3 on the day, so a little bit worrisome. Let's go high inside fastball. Got enough of it, man. Would have loaded the count, but he swings on it. Still alive there. I'm going to see if we can place a slider inside. Kind of an interesting pitch, but it's a swing and a miss. Would have been a strike if he took it anyways, but we get the win. A lot of close wins so far in this season. Oh, that's one that you love to see for sure. Seven and four. That was uh, Sewald's sixth save in just 11 games played so we are getting our money's worth out of him trying to see if he was eligible for a contract extension because i think he's already worth it but i legit can't find it in this menu so i guess for now we'll have to wait i will say we are a game and a half in front of the al west which is really good news for us if the rangers can be weak we know i mean it's all, all of these teams have a chance to do bad enough for us to beat them but okay the team rankings kind of interesting 13th ranked team so far in the mlb 14th in contact 11th in power 16th in pitching bad defense 23rd there 23rd speed so like we're in a very middle of the road spot but still finding a way to get the wins drew stack and rider leading the way already with three wins and paul leading the way with his six saves is really big 
Not sure we'll have a lot of other players uh, leading in many spots. I just, I know that we're not doing a crazy amount. We have uh, a lot of walks allowed. Well, not really, just like two walks total there. It's so early in the season, most of these stats don't matter. Adam Frazier does already have 15 hits through 14 games, so that's really good news for us, man. Jose Abreu, 19 hits already. That's pretty impressive. He's doing work. And already, our sponsorships have earned us 390k, so that's also good news. Uh, let's just go ahead and advance to the last two games of this episode the first one on the road logan gilbert starting he's gonna get the loss man our losses are really big losses we don't score a lot of runs that's a seven lo one loss in the last game of this episode marco gonzalez going up against lucas giolito and it's a 5-8 loss the most runs i've seen us score but it's not enough unfortunately for us in that game uh, Luis Torrens, our catcher, or one of our catchers, broke his hand. So he's going to be out for two to three months. The good news is we have decent or a decent amount of depth at the catcher's position. So we should be okay there. It will definitely hurt us quite a bit. But we've got Harry Ford, again, the young prospect who is able to step up and fill the shoes for now. And Harry, has he gone up at all? No. He just happens to be uh, catching up to Jake, who is dropping in double A. Tom Murphy down to a 79 overall. So, uh, I don't know. We need... Uh, oh, gosh. Everybody is just dropping in overall in the uh, the catching department. That, that worries me a little bit, but uh, we should be okay. So, after the rough couple of losses to the White Sox, we are sitting... Uh, now technically tied for the Rangers for the division at seven and six. Hot start to the season has cooled off a little bit. We're five and five in our last 10 games. And I don't think we can be too upset with that. I think this was a really, really productive start to the season. A win on opening day. Uh, we were above 500 for a while. I mean, I guess we're still above 500. We just have to stay there. Um, some really big series coming up against division rivals or divisional opponents even against the Astros and the Rangers. But unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until next episode. Again, if you have ideas about trades we should do or your views on our pitching camera, let me know in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm surprised that we're above 500. Uh, if we could get slightly better pitching, uh, I think that we could do a little bit better because we're giving up a few too many runs. I mean, eight runs here, seven runs here. 15 in that game against Minnesota. That's just too much. Once you've hit the like button, though, subscribe if you want to be notified when uh, new videos get posted, either for this Mariners franchise or with our Eastern Michigan Dynasty. And then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to uh, my Twitter, my TikTok, my Instagram, and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.